Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training, what we are going to do is we are going to build an acoustic wall with the Fabric Mate system on this wall that is directly behind me. If you're new to the channel Ken Training, what we do is we try to give you, the YouTube audience, all the tools and education you need so that you can tackle this project and projects like this on your own. Uh, today's video, I'm not going to go into great detail on how to construct this wall because I have other Fabric Mate videos that show you in great detail how to do all the cuts, all the precision that you need to do, depending upon what it is that you're trying to accomplish. On today's video, we're going to turn this wall from this to this. This is the uh, final product of the uh, of the room and the way that we are going to do it is is we are going to first start out by building the frame Mr. Cameraman go ahead and zoom in right here and what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, three there's going to be three sections with two seams right here now uh, the perimeter of this job is going to be with with the low leg material which which I'll show you when we get to it this wall over this um, material uh, for the frame right here has to be a tall leg because ultimately there's a wall coming in right here that I need to tie into. That's not going to be on this video because we don't have the materials to do this second wall today. So we're just going to do this wall right now. We're going to start over here in this lower in this lower right hand corner and then build out. The first section I want to be 34 inches tall. Then the next section is 48. And then we're going to go up to the ceiling, which will be about 34 inches for that last section. But uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. So a lot of this video, go ahead and pan back, Mr. Cameraman. A lot of this video is going to be uh, fast forwarded because I've got, I gave you guys plenty of training on how to build these walls in other videos. So please check out my channel, Ken Training. I'll have links at the end of the video and possibly in the description too. On, um, on more details on how to build these um, fabric made walls. Section, I have a 34 inch piece because that's going to be my, my first leg. And I got to make sure that my spacing um, block, which I'm going to use this as my spacing block, which is a one inch spacer because of the recore material. I'm going to put that on top of the um, code base to make sure it's spaced properly. And I have to kind of hold this together while I put this bottom piece in to make sure everything lines up just the way I want it to, which is pretty much right there. That looks perfect. We'll go ahead and strike this in. Okay, because we want our first seam to be at 34 inches, so I've got my, my 45 degree angle cut here that's already pre-notched, and I've got my speed square right here so I can make sure I'm at a perfect 45 degree. I can bring, I can bring this in, match up this seam so it's perfect, make sure that I'm good as far as a perfect 45 degree, and then I can go ahead and secure this to the wall. And that is perfect. All right, now we're going to get ready to uh, bring the bottom line across and bring this line across. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring across the bottom leg right here, and we're going to use a low leg material. And to make sure that the seams line up just perfectly, I'm going to use my manual uh, tool here. And you put those in, and it ma makes that joint exactly perfect. Then I can. Uh, put, just use the uh, coal base as a straight edge for the rest of it.
I'm going to uh, bring this wall across for the first seam and I've got a tall leg of material here. I'm going to put this in for my seam to make sure that that's 100% there. Now the only question is, is how everything's going to line up. Got my four foot level here and what I'm going to do, make sure that I'm totally solid. I'm in this way, get a nice bubble on my line on my level I mean and that's all I need to do I'm going to slap this in here we go Okay, so now I want to get my, uh, my frame material around my electrical outlet here. I already prepped this by um, installing the one inch spacer yesterday, so I didn't have to mess around with it today. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the cover plate. And I'm just going to loosen the outlet. A little bit so it's not tight okay so it can come off the wall a little bit now I've already pre-cut my uh, frame for this but basically it's going to be something like this all right I'm going to split the difference here all right so pretty much that's good let me get this in bottom and when it's something like this I just kind of split the difference to make sure it's good we're totally fine though and there it is there's the frame ready to go uh, I will have to take this electrical outlet off when I put the fabric in or just bring it out otherwise I won't be able to bring put the fabric in but for now I'm not at the fabric stage I'm just going to leave it like that with the screws here on the ground because I still have to put the recore material in alright so I have my pre made pa uh, pre-cut packages from the fabric mate uh, store so that I didn't have to do my 45 degree angles uh, because they cut their 45s better than, than my tool can do it, and I don't have a chop saw here in the field. But the thing that I don't like is that this is the way, this is how much material they cut out in the, uh, in the 45 degrees. So when I put this seam here, and the extra fabric is supposed to go in here, I can tell you right now, that is not big enough. That, that uh, notch is not big enough. Let me show you the notch that I want. I want a notch... It, that is like this. I want my notch that big. That way it is a lot easier for my material to go in there. I'll try to smooth that, that one thing out right there. I've got a utility right there just so that no fabric gets caught. There. So I just just like that. So that's now that notch is plenty. This is all hidden. You won't even see this anyways. Because this is going to go, when my piece goes in right here, this goes here. You'll never see this. This is all buried behind the, behind the fabric wall. So because of that, having that notch is, a uh, bigger notch is better than a smaller notch.
All right, now we're going to put in the next piece going up, which is exactly 48 inches, which is exactly where I want my next seam to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in, make sure the seams line up perfectly with my manual tool. Using this as the one inch spacer, I'm going to put that up against the wall, holding this back and in place. So you see, I've got, and then, and then making sure the material is down. All I have to do now is just grab my, my staple gun and staple it in. Alright, now for my next seam to come across, I'm going to use one of my pre-cut 45s, put it up here, use my speed square. Okay, so I'm ready to continue on with my frame up the wall. I'm going to start here in this corner, and once I get this established, I'll cut this piece to match whatever size it ends up being. So what I've got is I've got two 245s, one with a low leg, because I want a low leg across the top, and one with a tall leg, because I want a tall leg on this wall right here. And the only thing that I don't know is I don't know how much spacing to go this way and how much spacing to go this way. Let me show you how to establish that. So we, we do know that on the right hand side I need a one inch spacer. So I have an extra piece right here, the two in my hand plus an extra. This will take care of the one inch space that I need to go this way. Now, what Fabric Mate does to give you the distance on the top is they give you this, which in my opinion is a little on the thin side, but uh, whatever, it is what, it's, what, it's what they provided. This is the gap that they want when you go up, uh, up against like a ceiling surface like this. So this is just about a sixteenth of an inch. Personally, I would have preferred more like an eighth of an inch, but uh, uh, so what I'll do is I'll be a little lax, so I won't be tight, tight, tight to the ceiling just to give myself a little bit of space there. Because um, they only provided one of these, they didn't give me two. So this way um, I can figure out exactly how much space up and how much space to the right. And I'm just going to bring it down slightly so it's not tight, tight, tight to the ceiling. And pretty much that's it. Okay, I got this one on the right. And just to make sure I'm perfect on this one, let me pull out this spacer block. I don't need that anymore. And let me see if I can get a speed square in on this to get uh, a perfect 45 <clears throat> for this piece. There we go. And right about there is a perfect 45. Now all I have to do is measure from here to here. Actually, yeah, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could measure, but uh, why measure when you don't have to? Let me show you this technique. Okay, so I could use my tape measure and measure from here to here, but in all honesty, it's unnecessary. All I have to do is take the piece that I want to put in this wall, bring it up here, match it to the top of that, come down here, and just mark it with my pencil. 
where the cut should be. And it's pretty simple. And now I'll just cut that. Okay, we have cut our piece. It's going to fit in here perfectly, but here's the problem. Now, you'll see where my uh, seams come in right there. You'll see that there's a small amount of material right there that I do not want. That is going to mess me up. I know that's going to mess me up. So I'm just going to take that and shave that with my utility knife right now so that this goes straight straight down and across. So when I put my fabric in here, it's unobstructed. Right now, this piece right here would be a big problem. So I'm going to cut that back. All right, instead of using the utility knife, I'm just going to use the uh, chamfer cutters and get that in there straight. Cuts it really nice. It's a lot easier than the utility knife because it's got so much leverage. That's why it's easier. To, it's actually easier to work with this tool than a utility knife when you want to cut this off. All right, so now let me show you how well that worked out. Okay, see how now I can put in my uh, my manual tool 100% unobstructed because that amount of plastic is not restricting me. So that is the reason why I wanted to nip that off. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the tool. See how, how much of that opening I have there? So that's way when I fold in my fabric, it'll be no problem. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our 45 degree corner in to tie this in first. Uh, it's two low legs of material. Now, technically what I need is I need a spacer for the top and I need a spacer against this wall here. But I only got one spacer, so I'll have to kind of guesstimate this. So I'll slap, I'll do the, I'll do the back wall first. I'll kind of guesstimate the top wall. There. Alright, so now I want to get my frame tied in. First thing for me to do is put this 45 degree angle right here. So I've got a tall leg, because it's a tall leg coming across, mated with a, a low leg. Now, I've got, this is going to match up just like that one there, so I know that height is appropriate. All I have to do is get my left and right down. And right about like that, Right about like that is perfect. So I can go ahead and slam this in. And now we can just match those two pieces and put them in. All right, so I got my piece. Uh, same thing as the other side, just put it in and use my pencil and mark this out and tie it. So 
okay, so we've got the frame, the entire frame is now up on the wall, and now we're starting to mount our recore material. Because this is a 48 inch uh, distance between here and here, the most efficient way to use this product is to install, I've already got this piece installed, and then to put this piece up here, and then uh, figure out how much I need to, to cut off and then cut that off and then put that in. So we're in the process of um, uh, doing this right now. Okay, we're just getting back from lunch and we just got the recore material up here in the center section. Now I'm going to work on the uh, top section there and then we'll do the bottom section last because it's got that little electrical thing I got to go around as well. But, uh, but that's it for now. We're going to get to work. Okay, so what's happening is, is now I'm putting in my filler, uh, my filler strips for my recore and I want to show you, the audience, what I'm trying to accomplish here. We already used this piece uh, for this section right here. This was the side that I cut. This is the factory side, factory cut side here. So I'm taking the factory cut side and I'm putting it up against my frame material. I'm pulling just a couple of inches away like this, taking my blade from my utility knife or my X-Acto knife or whatever this tool is called here, running it flat along here, like this, so I have exactly the exact cut line where that should be. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Hopefully I can do it. Well, now I can actually pull this forward. Do the same thing here. Now I've got my two cut lines there. And I'm going to put this on my bench and uh, cut it with my T-square. Okay, so this is the piece that I want to cut. This is the factory cut side. This is the side I'm going to cut because I've already cut this. This will be a little scrap throwaway piece right here. Now, I can see, I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, but I can see it where I made my, my marks. The first one is right there. So what I'll do is I'm going to put that my... Uh, um, exacto knife in there, get that nice and square, and I'm going to see if that lines up with the line that I did over here, and it's off by a little bit. The wall might be a little bit off. I'm not going to go by the T-square, I'm actually going to go by where I labeled it. That's actually going to be more accurate than the T-square in this case, because the wall might not be perfectly square. So, um, this is the side that I want to keep, this is my scrap side. So you always want to cut towards the scrap side. You never want to have this reversed where I'm just cutting here and cutting possibly into the good material. So you always want to make sure that you are protecting your material at all times. So all I have to do is line that up. Right there is perfect. I'm going to hold this down reasonably well, as well as I can, holding the square plus the material so that the square doesn't walk on me while I make this cut because I have to push into the guide when I do this. So because there's some pressure there and I want to I want my cut to be as perfect as possible. And you have to do this a few times in order to to get this exactly right all the way through. Okay, and just take this, okay, 
we're good there. Now let's see how well I did putting this piece in. Now it has to go back, it has to go in the way I cut it because I cut it not exactly square because I was going to where I marked it. So this has to go up. Let's see how well this works out. Now we'll see if I did an alright job. Let me climb up here. And it's a tight fit, that's for sure, but you see your seams here. Those seams are pretty much flush. I'll put a couple of tacks in there with the gun, and we are good. And that's how you do it. We are now at the bottom section of the wall. All the rest of the wall is completed. This is one, one full panel, which is two feet by four feet. Now, if I installed it down here and then put my piece here, then you're going to possibly see that cut. There's no reason for me to put this as the cut piece because it's more visible to the eyesight. So a better strategy is for me to install this piece like this. Let me show you. Up here, up tight here, and then that'll be my cut piece at the bottom, and I'm going to cut that. So let me just get this in place. I want that nice and tight. I want all my seams tight. There we go. So now when I do this piece down here, I'll do the cut down there. You'll never see it. It'll be completely buried. Okay, so we've uh, cut this piece out. It's going to fit in like this, just like that. Okay, so even though I tried to cut these 45s as best I could, they're not perfect, so I have some white electrical tape here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some white electrical tape over like this to try to cover up those uh, dark spots because those I know will show through the fabric that I'm working with. So I'm just going like this, and now here I've got a pretty good sized line there. I want that hidden too. So I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on that too in an effort to make sure that everything is hidden behind the, uh, like the tape so, that, so there's no, no gaps. There's a gap here at the bottom. Same thing. So I'm just going around looking at any place that I don't really like and I'm just going to take some white electrical tape uh, because my fabric is white, the frame is white, every, and the recor is white so this way it, it will have the least likelihood of showing anything through. So just like that. And I'm just going to go around the rest of this uh, right there and get that one too. I'll just touch that one more time. Yeah. 
That'll give me the least shadowing for the job. Okay, so what I've done is I was originally going to install this panel up at the top section here, but I noticed over in the lower right hand section over here, there was a small blemish. So let me see if I can show that to you right now. It's right here. Go ahead and zoom in right there. And that is a factory defect. That is not from me being dirty. That's from the factory that way. That was not from me. So, so what I did was, go ahead and pan back. So what I did was, is that was originally going to be right here. And I felt that was going to be in a very highly visible section. So what I chose to do was take the fabric, turn it 180 degrees upside down, and put that deformity in the lower right hand section that will not be as visible. Hopefully the section when I put it up the next, you know, when I get to that top section, it'll be a nice clean section. So we, uh, so we did that. Then what we did was, is I took my manual tool and I just tacked in all the perimeter of everything. I haven't even cut my fabric yet. Now you'll notice that I do have some bubbles right here is like probably one of the most pronounced bubbles right there. But when I roll that in with this tool, with the roller tool, my expectation is, is that I'll be able to roll that out and roll that in taunt. So uh, right now, I'm just going to take my fabric cutters here, now that my fabric is all the way around the perimeter, and I'm just going to take it and, uh, and cut in so that I can roll it in. Okay, now that I've got everything cut, I'm going to start rolling it in. I'm going to start here at the top center and then work my way out. So I just find my seam. See, there's that bubble right there. Let's see if I can take that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this in. A string here. Let me cut that. See that? That ripple has been taken out right there, so it's taunt. I'm just going to continue this all the way through the whole thing. When I get to the corners now, I want to not 
I, you can't just roll right into the corner because of the curvature of the blade. So I've got to start using this tool. So I'm going to start working it in. And I don't want to rip the fabric, so I'm watching what I do. Now, if you remember, this is the piece that I cut that notch in. And that notch is for that excess fabric to fall, find its way into. So let's see if I can get it in there. There we go. See how you got to work it in. And there we go. That's one side. And now I'll work it here. And now I can roll this side out. And that's basically how you do the corners. Alright, now we've got the fabric over our outlet. This is where the outlet is going to go, right here like that. Let's get this thing in. Now, I'm going to start cutting here. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to overcut. So I want to make sure that I stay away from the, um, the ends too much because I don't want to, like I said, overcut. I want to cut just right. So it looks like right about there is one. This one is right about there. You, can, you might be tough for you guys to see, but I can kind of see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to come in here, right like that, and right like that. All right. So basically, that's, I just have to fold this in. So let me just cut off these little wings like this. Okay, perfect. Now we use this tool here, and we start folding it in like this. And, and just, you know, take your time. Don't go too crazy and get it in there. The, the toughest part is those corners there. So you just want to don't go too crazy on the corners. Make sure you get it in just right. Like so. Okay, you see that? It's 100% perfect. Now, I gotta bring my wires out and everything, but basically that's gonna go there, this is gonna go here, and when the outlet cover plate goes on, that will be your final product. So I'm gonna wire this up right now. I'll show you the final product when I'm done. All right, everybody. This is the uh, final product of the uh, of the room. This is what everything looks like. There's your top panel. There's your middle panel. It's hard to see everything because it's all white. Um, I guess when you're not, I'm not sure how well it's going to come out on on the computer. But uh, it looks it looks it looks really good. Now. I can tell you, I'm, I'll show you, the audience, my mistakes. All right, number one, I think my mistake was is I put the recoil material too tight. When I tried to roll it into the seams, let me tell you, I was really, really fighting it. I thought that I was going to break uh, this tool. I thought I was going to break the roller because I was putting so much pressure on it in order to roll it 
into the seam. So I think I, uh, I won't go so tight on my recore on my n new walls. Also, I had my assistant, uh, he was trimming it up here and he didn't realize it, but it had come out of its seam, of its, um, where it was held in place and he trimmed it a little tight so I had to pull this area here back in this corner and reset it but in the, but in the process I was able to get it up up the top you can't even really see anything going on there before you could actually see that it was not you know it was showing that it was a uh, cut but I didn't have enough material and then right here in this corner I'll zoom in so you can see that that is definitely an imperfection uh, but considering where I'm at in this room and where that is way over there in the corner up there, I doubt that the, the average person isn't going to know it. Of course, I know it because I did the job, but um, the average person I don't think is going to see it. I'm not even sure if you can see it from this angle. So, um, but basically that is everything there for this uh, complete job. And that will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click on like. I need the likes. Leave some comments. We'd love to hear your feedback um, about either your projects, how well you think I did, any type of comment you would like to leave. Uh, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.